Hey there and welcome back to another Disney video. And today I want to talk about a film from the late 2000s that doesn't get nearly enough love or praise, but still managed to pull Disney out of a years long critical and commercial slump and kickstarted the Disney revival era of the 2010s, which was one of the most lucrative and successful times in the company's history seeing them crack the billion mark a number of times over the decade, as well as start to challenge Pixar's Golden Run come awards season, actually winning Oscars for the first time for their animated works. You know, not too shabby if you ask me. But yeah, Bolt's all where this sort of starts. And so I suppose we'd better begin with a little bit of context. At the start of the 2000s, Disney had just come out of what was at the time their greatest period yet. They had lots of box office hits, and they had a lot of critical acclaim. They were back in the public eye, and the popularity of animation was soaring to greater and greater heights, with lots of new studios finding their start, e.g. Pixar and DreamWorks. But Disney was still firmly the top dog. But then came the shift. Starting with The Emperor's New Groove, Disney started to move away from the style of the Renaissance era, with a new creative direction starting to take shape. Emperor's New Groove was well received, but did poorly at the box office. Brother Bear, Treasure Planet, Atlantis The Lost Empire, all films that couldn't really connect in one way or another. Some would do badly financially, some critically. And Disney, well, they were starting to flounder. Right around the time that Pixar started becoming a titan, and DreamWorks started to churn out a number of really big franchises that are still popular today. So Disney was in trouble. And I'm not saying that they were going to go under financially or become bankrupt or anything like that. After all, they were able to buy out Pixar during this time, and like I said, Pixar were in the midst of carving out a grand legacy during the 2000s. But they were at risk of their reputation falling back to what it was during their Dark Age, you know, before the Renaissance and after the death of Walt Disney, where their films just lacked that special quality. So they moved into 3D, into computer-generated animation, churning out films like Chicken Little and Meet the Robinsons, you know, a critical failure and a commercial disaster respectively. But this new form of animation, something that this particular studio hadn't really done before, and the acquisition of John Lasseter alongside the Pixar purchase, really did pave the way for Disney to produce Bolt. Or at least, Bolt in the form that it's known as now, as Lasseter overhauled everything. New directors, new setting, new plot, and told them to have it animated in 18 months. Jesus, pretty big task. But one that really did seem to pay off for the studio. And so, in 2008, we see the release of the film. Bolt, which tells the story of a white Swiss shepherd named Bolt who's adopted by Penny, who at the time is aged seven. Five years later, the two star in a hit primetime show named for Bolt, in which she plays the daughter of a scientist who's been kidnapped by the evil Dr. Calico, aka the man with the green eye. And all the while, Bolt is playing her genetically enhanced dog. In a sort of Truman Show-like twist, the cast and crew all behave like this is real, that Bolt is actually a hero dog with superpowers and that Penny is actually in danger, and thus they use insane practical effects to keep up the illusion. The crew works at all hours to uphold Bolt's belief in his powers, all for the sake of authenticity, to make Bolt behave like no other dog ever would. However, in order to keep ratings high, the network forces the team to change things up, and thus a cliffhanger ending for the show is filmed where Penny's kidnapped and Bolt is left alone. And since he believes that it's all real, he panics and he tries to save her, accidentally getting knocked out and sealed up into a FedEx box and sent from Los Angeles to New York City. When he arrives in New York, much to his surprise, he can no longer use his powers, which he puts down to the power of the packing peanuts, his own little version of kryptonite. He then encounters Mittens, a stray cat, and thinking that cats are the servants of the villainous Dr. Calico, he threatens her and forces her to lead him to Los Angeles. And so the two hide in a removalist van and make their way across the United States, until a mishap with the packing peanuts sees them ejected near a trailer park halfway across the country. There they meet Bolt superfan Rhino the Hamster, who joins them in their quest, only for them to be apprehended by the local animal control. And whilst Rhino is able to free Bolt, Mittens remains trapped, with Bolt coming to the realisation that what she told him is true. He isn't a real hero, he's an actor, and he doesn't have any superpowers that will be able to magically save the day. But he doesn't give up, and he manages to save her, and the three escape from Ohio and get back on track. Once they arrive in Las Vegas, however, Mittens arranges a place for the three of them to stay forever. But Bolt reiterates that he has to get home to Penny, and that she wouldn't abandon him, that she needs him. And so Mittens gets upset as her owners abandoned her years before, and she yells at him and tells him to leave. And so he does. But she's quickly shamed by Rhino about abandoning her friend, and so she and Rhino follow him to LA. Meanwhile, in LA, 
Bolt sees that the TV company has replaced him on the show with a new white Swiss shepherd. And also, he feels like he's been replaced in Penny's affections, as she calls him her good boy. Which briefly breaks his heart, as he believes that Mittens was right. He had been abandoned and replaced. But Mittens and Rhino arrive to talk him round, just in time for Bolt to save the day for real, and find Penny during a fire at the studio, saving her from dying of smoke inhalation by barking loud enough for fire crews to hear them and cut through to them. Penny's mum takes her off the show, they adopt Mittens and Rhino, and they move away to live in a more rural and quiet area. A happy ending all round. And this is such a good movie. It did well for itself in every single respect. It grossed $310 million off of a budget of $150 million, which, well, it's not like this is a frozen level gross or anything like that, but hey, considering their last film, Meet the Robinsons, barely managed to recoup its budget, this made it a tremendous success in comparison. And then on top of that, it also did really well critically, making the film the studio's first joint critical and commercial success since the release of Lilo and Stitch way back in 2002. It currently sits on 90% for its critical score on Rotten Tomatoes, based on 189 reviews, and an audience score of 74% off of 250,000 reviews. So, whilst there is a little bit of a difference between its critical and audience reception, you know, which is probably a big contributing factor as to why this film often gets forgotten as that key linking piece, it still did damn well. And there are many good reasons as to why. For starters, the voice cast. They put out really good performances. You know, I'm not a huge John Travolta man, or at least modern John Travolta, but here he puts on a really good showing. Miley Cyrus was good. Susie Essman as Mittens was an S-tier performance showing huge range from quippy and sarcastic to grief-stricken and lonely, all the way to shitting her pants terrified of all the crazy scenarios that she's finding herself in because of Bolt. And really, these good performances really do go a long way in making the film engaging and enjoyable. And we'll stay on the audio side of things for a moment to talk about the score now. Disney came back swinging. After years of having next to no memorable songs, they had I Thought I Lost You and Barking at the Moon, which, you know, they're obviously not Disney's most iconic songs. But they were still really catchy and heartfelt. And for me, Barking at the Moon is up there with When She Loved Me, from Toy Story 2, as one of the most goosebumpy, spine-tingling songs in an animated film. So yeah, the score was decent, not revolutionary, but decent and very enjoyable, and it enhances the viewing experience, even if it doesn't have that many songs that stick in your mind after the film ends. In terms of animation, I think it does look on par with a lot of films of its time, and honestly, it is a major step up in quality from the 2D work that Disney had done during the 2000s. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love traditional animation, but I feel like the quality they were putting out just wasn't there for some of those films. But here, 3D was something fresh and new, at least for Disney and it definitely helped propel the studio forward in a positive creative direction. And then narratively, the film's actually really well put together. I really enjoyed the fake out beginning. How your initial first watch suggests that the film's gonna be a generic action flick about a dog with superpowers that's protecting his person. You know, it's a fun premise, but one that's been done to death and is probably not gonna be very gripping. Only for them to pull out the rug from underneath you after a massive opening chase and action sequence and reveal that this is a take on the Truman Show. They get split up, and the film pivots once again to a road movie about reuniting with the people you love, finding a new purpose in life, and finding a home and family. On top of that, it's well structured and there's no real lulls in the story. You have your emotional and character development moments, where Bolt or Mittens or Penny have moments of pathos, which in turn pushes their individual and overall story arcs forward, but then every 10 to 15 minutes, there's a fresh action sequence just to liven things up a little bit. Is it a perfect film? No but it is very good. And it's a film that in my eyes developed the formula that many Disney films would go on to use to tremendous success. And so, I think this film deserves a whole lot more love. Because not only is it good, but it really set up Disney for a lot of future success. And its value and legacy really can't be understated. But yeah, that's probably the end of the video here. And so with all that being said, I'd just like to remind you that these have been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about Bolt? You like it, hate it? Do you think I'm overrating its legacy, or maybe you think I'm underrating it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.